Hi, you know, I'd love us to have a heart to heart. Is that okay? You see, lots of women ask me where they should even start when they decide to start investing in themselves. And what should they include in their wardrobe? What should they buy first? And where should they go? And particularly if they're on a budget. And these are great questions because the combination of what we see in magazines and the shops, plus the advice, views and opinions of others, along with our own narrative about what we should or shouldn't wear, depending on our age, or what does or doesn't suit us, depending on our body shape, well, that can all get really overwhelming. So here's my five best advice tips that I can give to you to get you on the right track in buying pieces that you're going to love and which will work really hard for you in your wardrobe. First, work through my style confidence guide. Really, really get to grips with the journaling exercises in there so that you are super clear and armed with a list of the five, 10 or 20 pieces that you reach for the most and we can build on that. Or if you're not wanting something for the everyday and you're kind of at the space, you want something a little special and to inject something different into your wardrobe, what does that look like to you? Let's get clear on that. Is it a dress? And if so, are we thinking knee length, midi or longer? Is it a jumpsuit? Maybe it's a skirt and a top. Maybe it's some dungarees, pleather trousers, a different style of jeans, a blouse to pep up your jeans in the daytime or something with some print or colour. What is it that you fancy? My advice is not to take yourself too far away from what you're used to as there's a little danger that you'll buy something that you won't wear. So whilst it's good to push the boundaries, I'm all for that, just maybe go one or two steps away from what you're used to rather than a whole marathon. <laughs> I also want you to get clear on how you spend your time, as well as thinking about any particular styling needs that you have. So for example, do you have a preference for certain fabrics or particular styles of shoes or boots? Perhaps you feel cold, the cold a lot and need to layer up, or perhaps you run warm and need to dress in lighter layers. Thinking about these things is like your battle plan so that you're only buying things that you like, that you need, and that fit in with your lifestyle and which accommodate any personal styling requirements that you have. Secondly, let's get clear on a budget for you. Now, identify how much you can ring fence for your wardrobe. You could maybe increase this by selling some other things on eBay, or you can make it go further by buying from pre-loved sites or charity shops, or by swapping pieces with friends, and by looking to brands such as TK Maxx, H&M and New Look, plus supermarkets for inexpensive pieces. Many brands now use Klarna so that you can pay in instalments if that appeals to you. And of course, there's always catalogue type brands, which are a more affordable option. So this part is about getting creative with your budget. Thirdly, I'd suggest that you identify some colours that you like, that ones that make you really happy and bring you joy and make you want to dance and try and reflect these in and across your outfits where you can so that everything ties together, not in a matchy matchy way, but in a way that makes things look intentional. Okay, so we're now onto the fourth of our list of top five tips. If I was going to suggest 10 pieces for an everyday stay at home wardrobe, I'd go with one pair of straight jeans in a mid to dark blue wash because they're really flattering on most body shapes. I'd also go with one long sleeve top, either striped or with a slogan or some colour on it, which will both work with the jeans. Next, I would go with a printed blouse type top, which would also go with the jeans then I'd look to an everyday dress, probably with sleeves so I could roll them up, button through, good length to it, because this can be worn with most styles of footwear and it can be styled in different ways. For example, you could layer the striped top underneath it. I'd also work in an everyday skirt because this could be worn with the long sleeve top or the blouse and the knitwear that I'm going to show you in a minute. I'd have a simple crew or v-neck knit to go with the jeans or the skirt which I've just shown you and it could also be worn over the long sleeve top or blouse. The blouse could have a little pussy bow coming out over the top and then I'd have a cardi with something about it. Maybe it'd be a longer one, a chunky one, a cable knit, just something that you like the idea of and this I could wear with the skirt or the jeans. So then we've got three items left. I would choose either an additional something that's already on the rail, maybe another top, a denim shirt, slogan tee, or another dress or a different style of jeans, depending on what you wear the most and you're going to get the wear out of. Then with the final two items, I'd have a pair of boots, everyday ankle boots, and a pair of shoes or trainers, loafers, a low wedge, something that you find really easy to wear and rush around in, because I know how busy we all are. We need to be comfortable and we need to be able to race around. Fifth, I'd work on including some accessories when the time is right. For example, a few fine necklaces laid together is good for the everyday, or a bright crossbody bag, or some stacked rings, some star earrings, a printed scarf, 
basically you want to have things that you're going to wear a lot and that you're going to be able to put with all these outfits so you can see how many outfits we created from 10 pieces whether you're working at home going out for lunch with friends going for a meal out or anything in between we've got you covered and it needn't be expensive or overwhelming i hope that this has helped you to give you an outline a game plan on how you can start building a wardrobe that you love you have a great day now and bye for now